Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Weekends with Alex Witt. Alex is off today. I'm Dara Brown. Breaking news at this hour, an active standoff in Dallas, Texas is underway between police and at least one suspect inside what witnesses are calling an armored van. Police negotiators have been on the phone with one suspect inside the vehicle who has identified himself as James Bulware. This comes after a night of violence which started at just past midnight when one or more suspects inside a black van struck a police squad car and opened fire on officers. That incident happened outside the police department headquarters in Dallas. The officers then chased the van into the town of Hutchins, where there was another exchange of gunfire in a restaurant parking lot. In an overnight news conference, Dallas PD says no officers have been injured, but multiple bags were left around police headquarters with pipe bombs inside. A motive is unknown at this point, but here's what Dallas PD had to say about the unconfirmed identity of James Bulware. Uh, the suspect has told our negotiators that we took his child and we accused him of being a terrorist and that he's going to blow us up and uh, then cut off negotiations. Let's bring in former ATF hostage negotiator and MSNBC law enforcement analyst Jim Cavanaugh. Jim, what is the most absolute pressing issue at this moment for these negotiators? Right. Well, it's to stop the shooting and stop the killing, attempted killing here. Uh, the guys in the van, one or more suspects in the van there are with rifles, and they've got to stop that. But it seems like they have that at a static position now. Um, they've disabled the vehicle, this described armored vehicle, and uh, Dallas PD SWAT has it surrounded, and they're negotiating. So this is all you know, professional police operations. Dallas PD is one of the best in the world. Uh, it, it, all police operations are great SWAT team and negotiators. And they've got it locked down there. And uh, they're going to be able to deal with that static situation as long as it's only one or more, you know, actors in there, suspects in there, as opposed to them holding anybody against their will. So it's a barricade on a vehicle. They're more than capable of dealing with that. <laughs> Jim, thank you so much. And now I want to bring in former ATF executive Matthew Horace. He's here in the studio with me. Matthew, you know the area well, and you've handled situations like this. Can you tell us what's going on here? Well, you know, you have several scenes. You have the police department. You have the possibility that there may be explosive, in, explosive devices and packages. So you need that explosive mitigation there on site. You have the police investigation. They need to find out how many people are involved in this case, where those guns are, how many rounds were fired, and start to do the background. And then at the scene, as Jim's just alluded to, you have the hostage negotiation. We have to determine if, in fact, this is who he says he is. If he's a convicted felon, they have to stop the bleeding and stop the violence now. Now, you, you mentioned stopping this, but the police have done an amazing job of keeping everything quiet and, and peaceful, and thankfully, none of the police officers have been injured in this. What's their next step as day breaks? Well, as day breaks, as Jim alluded to, we have to stop the violence. So we have to mitigate this vehicle, ensure that we bring this to a successful, nonviolent end, if possible, and then work our way back and determine all the facts of the case. The Dallas police have done a phenomenal job. When you look at that video, there were any number of points of reconciliation where there could have been gunfire and hostile gunfire, but there wasn't. When the, when the armored vehicle rammed the police car, certainly uh, lethal force would have been justified. When rounds were being fired, a, gun, a gunfight could have ensued, but it didn't. So they've carried this thing out through a chase, through streets, and now they're at a point where they're trying to bring it to a successful conclusion. Jim, I, I'd like to bring you back in again. How long do you think this is going to, this standoff is going to last? Well, that's hard to predict, Dara. I mean, uh, you know, a, a fanatic uh, in there, which seems like what we have, a guy bent on revenge on the uh, authorities, the Dallas police is who he attacked. I mean, uh, who he's after, you know, could be a little more cloudy than that because it's a custody battle apparently over his 11-year-old kid. He has some sort of revenge on the police. Is it the police in general? Is it government in general? Is it the Dallas police specifically? But in any case, I mean, this is irrational behavior, so the guy doesn't operate in a rational manner. You know, the negotiators there, the chief negotiator, they will develop a strategy on how to talk to him, you know, how to reach him. There's going to be a lot of listening to what he has to say. He's going to get plenty of time to talk about all his grudges and grievances, you know, against uh, the police or the courts or the judge or whoever he's mad at.
and he may be mad at Dara, all of the above. And of course, he's going to be making demands. He's going to want this, and he's going to want that. He's going to want his child brought to him. He's going to want money, uh, or you know, who knows? Fantastico uh, demands a helicopter to take him to Bimini or something. But all that's going to be a normal course of business for the negotiators. It's just going to take time. They're going to have to talk with him, work him through it. One of the unanswered questions we have, Darren, that you've talked about, Matt alluded to earlier, you know, who's in the van, first of all? How many people are in the van? Who are they? Is it just him? Uh, you know, and the other question is, were there other suspects involved that are not in the van? That's still unclear. Uh, people talking about multiple shooters, but rarely do you get to an active shooting scene like that where witnesses don't tell you there's multiple shooters because... Sometimes witnesses see one thing, another witness half a block away r reports it a little differently. It sounds like a different person, but it could be the same person moving along. Gunfire can be, you know, echoes. It can be police officers. So we're not quite sure if there's other actors there. And I don't know if Dallas PD knows for sure yet either. So we have to see. It well, is hard, though, to get people to help you in your, it's not impossible to get people to help you in revenge against the government, but if your revenge against the police or the government is sort of loopy, it's a little harder to get people to help you, although you can get a family member to help you, you know, maybe a, a, a spouse or brother or something. But it, it's more difficult when your cause is not a, um, you know, a, a sort of a political activist cause, a terrorist conspiracy cause, an anti-government movement cause, when it's just your personal sort of you know, a distorted mental cause, it's hard to get people to say, hey, you know, would you go help me attack police headquarters? And people don't normally want to get involved with that. So, well, it, it remains to see if there are other actors in there. If they are, uh, if there are, they're likely, uh, you know, some of uh, his family or it could be uh, other people who sort of sympathize in some sort of anti-government bent. Jim, but we are going to go now unclear. to some um, some police. Uh, uh, the Dallas police had a briefing earlier this evening, or and we're going to go to them right now to see what they had to say about the situation and how it originally began. Yeah. On June 13th, at approximately 12.30 a.m., witnesses observed what they believed to be multiple suspects firing guns at the Dallas Police Department's headquarters, located at 1400 South Lamar Street. The suspects were parked in front of police headquarters. As police officers arrived, uh, the suspects rammed Dallas Police Officer squad cars and began shooting at the officers, striking the squad cars, but missing the officers. Officers returned fire, at which time the suspect fled the location, the 1400 Lamar location, in what witnesses say is an armored vehicle. Officers gave chase in their police cars of the suspects south of Dallas to the parking lot of a jack-in-the-box at 121 South Interstate 45 Service Road in Hutchins, Texas, uh, and the car parked and stopped there at around 12.44 a.m. While in the parking lot, there was a, another exchange of gunfire between the suspects and officers. Squad cars were struck during that exchange, however, no officers were injured. The suspects refused to exit the vehicle, at which time officers set up a perimeter. Our SWAT team was called and has since uh, began negotiations with the suspect. SWAT officers are currently talking with the suspect by cell phone and trying to find a peaceful solution. The suspect gave a name to identify himself, but we hadn't confirmed that that's him. That name he gave us was James Bullware, B-O-U-L-W-A-R-E. He's a white male, 5'10", 200 pounds. 
Matthew Horace, I'd like to bring you back in here and get your perspective on this. It started out as a uh, van and police shooting, and then there's a chase, and now we're getting word that this is possibly over a custody battle, and that this James Bulware, who the police have identified as the man inside the van that they are speaking to, that this is a custody battle, and potentially over his 11-year-old son. How does this change the scenario for the SWAT teams involved and for Dallas PD? Well, this, this doesn't change the scenario. What we have is a planned and calculated and unmitigated assault on police. We have a threat to public safety and police safety, and now they have to reconcile that threat and work, their, work ourselves backwards. The reasons for the attack are less important than stopping the attack at this point. And keep in mind, while this negotiation is still going on, the other piece that officers have to establish here is, did he booby trap the vehicle? Are there explosives in the vehicle? Are there other explosives in and amongst the scene? And, and, and then go back to the initial scene and determine if, in fact, there were explosives left there. Well, there's certainly many, many different moving parts to the scenario that's unfolding here. And we do have a reporter at Dallas Police Headquarters, and we'll get a live report from NBC's Charles Hadlock in just a few minutes.